This one's the opera episode. Christine, break us off a taste. Yeah, that was a little less opera and more like one of those plastic ghosts you'd hang near your door on Halloween. You do it. I can't. Just listen to the episode. Yeah, and this one had great opera people like Lisa Flanagan and Jenny Rhodes. They're two hilarious, wonderful operatic singers uh, and comedians. So just listen and make your life better for it. Do the opera sound again. Yeah, like that. That's the stuff right there. Welcome to Don't Mind If I Don't. I'm your host, Aaron Gold. This is the show where I don't like things, and fans and experts come on and try and convince me why I'm wrong so I can be a more cultured and well-rounded individual who isn't just a like a 29-year-old miser <laughs> about things. Today we're doing opera, which to me is, you know, I'll get into it in a second, but first let me introduce our guests. First of all, we have opera singer and improviser who combined the two of those for La Donna, a one-woman improvised opera. Lisa Flanagan is here. Hi, everybody. Hey, Lisa. Hi. I love your outfit tonight. Thank you so much. I'm wearing all black like a true New Yorker does. Yeah, but with like red glasses <laughs> that aren't like red in the lens. They're just red on the... My, my red glasses frames and yeah. some nice red lipstick. Yeah. I wanted to go with good bright, passionate colors, because we're talking about opera. We're talking about opera. Yeah, Yeah, you dressed the part. Thank you. Uh, Also, we have a PhD student in comparative literature and a woman who works on subtitles for the Santa Fe Opera, Jenny Rhodes is here. Hello. Hey, Jenny. (laughs) I have a Jeopardy audition in two weeks, so I'm going to pretend like I have a buzzer while we're doing this. Please do. If you just want to go like, "Eh," and then just uh, make all of your points in the form of a question. That'd be lovely. Okay. Also refer to me as Alex Trebek. (laughs) Can Can I award points throughout the show yes you can that is our producer grant goldberg the alex trebek of don't mind if i don't all right aaron is at negative that was very predictable uh (laughs) by the end of this i will be destitute so everything that comes in uh on this podcast gets ranked on a scale of uh zero to ten zero being total ambivalence to ten being blood curdling hatred opera clocks in at a solid six it is it's it's I can't deny that everybody in opera, let me just get this out of the way. Yeah, you're all talented. You're all extremely talented. The costumes are well made. The music is fantastic. The singing is ungodly. Like, it, p- human voices shouldn't be able to do that. Yes, okay. Acknowledged, out of the way. It's kind of boring. And it also is, like, pretty inaccessible for someone like me who is a layman. I'm trying to get back into it. So, th- Guys, why do you like opera? Um, interesting. Uh, I, I always love when, when opera is, is just as a form deemed inaccessible. Um, I, I've loved opera since fifth grade um, when we did a project about it and we got to see it and we made booklets and we got to sing it in, in school. And that was when I discovered I really loved singing this highly passionate form of music, this very emotional music. Um, but the other thing about opera is... It really is, it is a medium, it is a format. It's not just one thing. Um, and True. I think it gets very heavily stereotyped in that regard. Um, but yeah, I love opera for the fact that it is so emotional and passionate and that it allows you to feel in a way that I don't think a lot of media does nowadays. Okay, I want to talk about that real quickly. But uh, before we get to that, Jenny, why do you like opera? The same reasons. I, I, I've Great, also let's loved- get into it. <laughs> I've also loved opera since fifth grade when my choir, my children's choir, was in, were the urchins in a production of La Boheme. And the woman who played Musetto, who was this sort of flirty, fabulous character. You said like four words that don't make any sense to me, but keep going. So La Boheme is, a, is, is the opera that Rent is based on. Oh, oh They go yeah. see it. Cher, Bohem, got it. Cher goes to see it in Moonstruck. Mm-hmm. You may also know it from that. I don't, but keep it's going. It's fantastic. Um, with a crazed Nicolas Cage. Um, I'm in. M- Musetto was the most fabulous woman I had ever seen and they kind of carry her around and she was wearing a red dress and I don't think it ever felt so many feelings at once before and I've been hooked ever since all right okay well first of all there's is there such thing as a non-crazed Nicolas Cage <laughs> fair just but I think he's food a, for thought he's if, if he's Sometimes on a spectrum he sleeps this is this is this is a solid <laughs> nine Nicolas Cage can you imagine Nicolas Cage's <laughs> dreams 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. Enjoy that on your morning commute. Uh, so, all right, Aaron, that's uh, I'll give you two points. Oh, hooray! <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything's coming up all right. Uh, so, one one the biggest roadblock for finding uh, opera inaccessible to me mm-hmm. is that it's in a. a, a Almost always a foreign language. One of the videos you sent me, you sent me a bunch of videos. I, I watched a bunch, most of them. Uh, it had subtitles. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, uh, some of them did. Yeah, the one with the the guy with the gun talking about like it doesn't matter if I Eugene or yeah, Okay, yes. yeah, yeah this is the one that Grant saw me watching, and uh, I said that was a really good choice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's my favorite. It's my favorite. That was her suggestion. I learned yeah. Russian because of that aria. <laughs> so to finish your thought on that. It was boring. Like, I mean, it was <laughs> one note. It was like not one note. Literally, his singing was amazing. Not going to lie. But uh, uh, that, that's, by the way, that's a given in all of these. Yes, you're s- extremely talented. I really like that you want to get the level of um, prodigiousness out of the way. Like that doesn't <laughs> count towards opera. It, I mean, the fact that you need that to be, guys, we're fine with this. But let's just make sure that we don't talk about that. No, 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 no. We can talk about All that. Right. But here's the thing. It's not about whether or not opera is good. It's about whether or not I like it. And I can fully acknowledge that these are ungodly talents, but I find it not as accessible, like not, not as, not as fun, not as engaging. Um, because like I, I, I so kind of tune out. Yeah. How many dramatic movies do you like to watch? Uh, I like a few. Okay. So you, you sit and you watch something where but people, most of the time those are in English. Okay. So, or subtitled. Oh, so we're operas. So you can watch subtitles. I, I can, I can watch subtitles. Uh, but most of the stuff you sent me was not subtitled. Uh, it's true. I didn't have time to hunt for as many subtitles. And not just on you, because most of the opera I've seen in the world is not subtitled. But a couple were in English. A couple okay. were. Wait, who's been sending you to op- Because I think you also, actually, you, you live here, right? Yeah. So you shouldn't, there, there shouldn't be any, I don't, there, there's no, there are no companies here that perform without subtitles. No, no, I'm talking about like yeah. throughout my life, like okay. when I was a kid, I, I, my parents took me to What did you go to too. as a kid? I don't remember. Oh. I went to people singing loudly and Viking helmets. That's what I saw. <laughs> Uh, so it sounds like a bad production of Wagner. <laughs> so okay, no and bad. I'm gonna say that, that, that I can feel the respect yeah, for me draining out of this no, room. No, it's more the presentation of the fact that opera, in one of its, there are certain things about opera that don't reduce down well. When you take what is written for a full orchestra and turn it into piano, hats, and two singers on a bare stage for a concert and scenes program, that takes away a lot of what it was built for. I mean, uh, okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's fair. Hmm. Uh, and I, I, I honestly don't know how many opera reviews like that I, I, I've seen. Um, I granted have not seen a bunch of opera regulars, I guess, opera yeah, traditions. Yeah, like full but, productions. Yeah, but like in, even in these videos you sent me, I, I, I found myself going like, okay, I get it. Good singing and like the the subtitled one. Uh, what what was it called? The From Eugene Tino- Onegin. Eugene Onegin. The Russian one, yeah. Okay, um, I wanted to be like, I get it. You're sad. Maybe maybe I just didn't have enough context watching that song. But it's not it's not so one note as that. I mean, it is it is true that you when you when you have an R you maybe get one feeling or usually you get more than one feeling, but it's but it's one general. But one of the greatest lines that comes not too far after that. So that is sung right before a duel. And then in the next, beginning of the next act, the, the, the guy who's singing gets shot. In the beginning of the next act, the star, Eugene Onegin, starts off the act by saying, since I've killed my best friend in a duel, I've been living aimlessly. So you get these ch- shifts and registers. Now that's interesting. Yeah. That, that well, is... And this cuts to the heart of it, which is that you're jumping into the middle of yes. a huge... like. It's a story. It's a full story. I mean, True. Eugene Onegin is based on a novel. You're jumping it. You're like reading three sentences of a novel and you're going, mm, I don't know if I like it yet. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. The other thing that I'll tell people, especially people that I'm bringing to the opera for the first time, if you go to an opera, you look at the program and there is a full synopsis there. They want you to know exactly what's going to happen. So you are not caught up on what every word is. Nobody's ah. trying to surprise you with the plot. These have often been, you know, operas that have been in existence for hundreds of years. No one's trying to gotcha. Okay. 
Okay, so it's more just like, you know the story, here is our presentation of that story that you already know. And taking that in and going in with that knowledge, you don't have to worry about catching out, this is when they're saying this, this is when they're saying that. Mm. I, I actually, um, I think knowing the synopsis makes it easier to kind of pull away from subtitles and watch people actually interact on stage. Okay, that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. That, that all right, so if I do see an opera, I'm going to read up on that thing first. Get a little read up ahead of time. Also, in terms of opera, I also, for people who are coming to it for the first time, I encourage them not to feel like they have to be attentive for every moment. Really? Yes. Opera is... Okay. Uh, Jenny is nodding emphatically. Yeah, I mean, the, the origins of opera are sort of a reworking in the, in the 16th century, a reworking of the idea of the Greek festival of Dionysus, right? So the idea is it happened during Carnival, so people would be drunk. I like that um, you're like, right? Like, I would know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, it's a, you're right. You know, it's, a, it's, a okay. fest, it's a festival of theater where people are, the whole purpose is sort of ecstatic um, emotions and uh, sensations, sort of carnal sensations. So uh, this sort of, the, the current format of watching opera in a, in a dark room where no one ever speaks is a little bit artificial given its origins. Um, mm. And I think one of the f- most fun parts of my job, so every time you see a subtitle at a live, um, uh, at a live performance, it's because someone pressed the button. Mm. And uh, so we're sitting in a booth. The best part of sitting in one of those booths is that you get to kind of chat your mind wanders mm-hmm. since you're there for every performance and then it's it's almost uncanny the moments when something great happens everyone shuts up no one has to say anything you just kind of your attention drifts back to the stage so i think Lisa's exactly right that you shouldn't feel like you have to be razor sharp focused at every second okay that that makes opera that drops it down a point already <laughs> Uh, just because I feel like whenever I've, I've seen opera or, or videos of opera, even if it's like on my own time, I feel like I'm doing homework. Like it, it feels like <sighs> I got to get through this to mentally coordinate. Yeah. Um, and I think when you get the very best opera singers, when you really see incredible work in opera, it doesn't seem nearly as complicated. It seems very visceral. And that is when you get really the height of opera that they're reaching that. Um, How do you mean visceral? Um, these opera is never about um, really quiet domestic dramas or small choices. It's often about um, making sudden decisions that are drastic and emotionally based and very big feelings um, with very big consequences. So, like uncorny melodrama. Yeah, earnest. Ernest melodrama. It was interesting. It was something actually that I noticed. Um, Ernest goes to melodrama. Do you like Hamilton? Okay. Hi. <laughs> oh, did you see this coming? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I have not seen Hamilton, but I love the soundtrack. Uh, I, I think it's it's fantastic. Cool. Did you catch every word the first time you listened? No. Yeah. I caught a bunch though. <laughs> yeah. And with opera, I'm catching like none of them because they're all in Italian or something that I don't understand. I sent you several videos in English. Which one? Hold on. Let me go. I, hold on. She <laughs> sent them to me today. I did. In my defense, my in I defense, tried to I do the homework. I did not give him enough I, prep time. Thank you. That was my own fault. My own projects got the better of me this right. week. That's fair. You're right. very, very but talented. While you look at this, uh, um, I'll uh, speak to one thing about how I think, um, in speaking to like letting yourself feel, the idea the same when you go to an art museum and you look at paintings you don't have to understand why each stroke happened. There is an expansive, wider frame feel of how does it make you feel. And when you are given three solid hours of music, if not more, you don't have to deconstruct every moment of that. You don't have to understand when it's a minuet and why this is well, Belcanto Good because I already don't. Capo. <laughs> no, and I, I wouldn't ask you to. There are those of us that do. There are those of us that want to. And that, that is part of how we work with opera. But... It's something that if you're watching it and the music makes you think of something, it makes you feel something, and you drift, and you come back two, three minutes later, that's fine. Okay. I I would also say um, that you don't have the vocabulary that, not necessarily an opera, you don't have to be an opera performer or a, you know, 
uh, an expert on opera to know, but you don't even know the basics of what what is an aria, what is recitative. Like, That's true. What is the language of this art form I'm watching? So you're going sitting there and you're like, why is this song really boring? And it's because it's not really. I mean, it's it's recitative. It's just the exposition set to kind of chattery music that's not meant to be entertaining. It's just meant to drive the plot forward. And so if you're jumping into opera and you're like, why is this, why am I not like just engrossed in this? It's because those moments are few and far between in, in most opera. Um, and I'm trying to, it's, it's a, it's kind of a patient game that you have to be playing and know that you're playing. And it's also an old tradition that existed before, television. <laughs> it absolutely did. Wait, there was a time before <laughs> television? I don't. No, uh, that, that, that resonates. Um, but interestingly, the other thing I will say, as opera started to be adapted into the times, um, so musical theater comes from opera. As it developed in the late 19th and early 20th century, you have things like Porgy and Bess. You have things... Don't know what that means. Um, Oh, okay. Do you have you heard the? Do what, you what, know, did, do you know summertime? Summer like, time is from Porgy and Bess. Yeah. I thought Porgy and Bess was enough of a. a, a no, no, no. It's okay. It's no, more that I made an assumption. My no fair credit lady. here. Okay. Absolutely. My West Side lady? Story. Oh, what, I know West Side Story. Yeah. I know of my well, fair let's, lady. Let's explain what Porgy and Bess is. Porgy and Bess um, is an interesting piece because can it's I one. guess? I uh, yes, please. Because okay. if you're wrong, this is Porgy be and Bess. Oh. Uh, sounds like. Two friends who, uh, uh, Porgy makes it sound like a pig Corgi, but I don't think that has anything to do with this. Porgy and Bess. So I'm assuming Bess is the matriarch and Porgy, no, Porgy is the, the young suitor trying to vie for her affections. That, that, that part is accurate, actually. I did it! <laughs> um, except for I won opera. And, Guys, this been do not behind if I don't. <laughs> Um, it was uh, George Gershwin's opera. Um, it's also one of um, one of the few operas that is almost an entirely uh, African American cast. Oh, um, do you know the song "Summertime"? I know the Will Smith one. <laughs> I doubt they're the does same. Does he sample that? that no, song? no, I, can't I don't now. think he does. Summer, I don't think he does. Summer, summertime. No, not that one. <laughs> All right. Well, um, then we are. It's one actually. Thoughts. If I went and found the one where the living you. is easy, that summertime. Um, Can you guys sing? It? You're both. Uh, I, I no, know I'm not Lisa has an amazing it, so voice. Please, mind give me a little. I can sing it. I don't want to hurt. I'm, I'm going to come off the mic a little. All right. Pro right here. need a cigarette like because goddamn woman uh and the other thing also with opera is having being in a room with opera is so different than being with a stereo in opera you know what yes because i felt something watching you do that and i i already knew about how good your voice was but (laughs) i felt something just sitting across the table seeing you do that uh I'm still feeling resonances of, of, of something. Uh, I don't know much of what you said outside of summertime, living is easy. Uh, I'm also not great at picking up on li- lyrics okay. in general. But um, Even an opera like that sometimes would still have super, uh, super titles associated with it and okay. available to you. Um, God damn, Lisa. By the I'm way, just, yeah. seven points. Yeah, no, Lisa already won the podcast. Uh, holy shit. But also it's sexy, right? I mean, part of part of being able to do that is you can hear her breathing. You can people's bodies move in different ways in order to sing that. It's it's a it's a very embodied art form in a way that other things aren't because it has to be in order to project that way. Can we talk about uh because it's something I'm really interested in, um, that the performance art of opera is not the same as, for example, singing in a chorus or singing uh, pop music or whatever, that it's, it's a totally different 
uh, musical practice that has a practical purpose that uh, basically you have to be fucking loud, right? Yeah, no mics, no mic, almost, almost Wait, what? never, no mics, almost yeah, never, is, is, never microphones, almost. Um, I get nervous around microphones actually for a long time. I singing at them, I just I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do with you. Do, people look like they're eating you. I don't want to. <laughs> um, but no, it's this very cultivated, um, like like archers from so long ago that would take one really long bow and shoot it a fucking mile. It hmm. is this very careful balance. Um, to both create a sound that can travel hundreds and hundreds of feet to the back of a house and feel so present over an entire orchestra. Strings and horns and flutes. And that, when that all comes together, when you're immersed in that just envelope of sound, it is a magical experience when you give yourself over to it. Well, I, I do want to give myself over to it. Like, I, I want it to take me... For the record, I will be taking you to something at the Met after this. Like, we're going <laughs> to fucking go to an opera. That's yeah. happening. Sounds great. Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, Have you been to the Met before? You I said you've remember. seen opera before. I think you would probably remember. You would remember. That. You would remember yeah. if you go yeah. to the Met. Like, yeah. you give my memory a lot of credit. No, no, no. The no, Met is like this ridiculously plush building... When, when, when people are like, oh, the opera's so elitist, and I look at the Met building, I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, yes, everything is, <laughs> is, is plush velvet red carpet and even some of the walls, but, <laughs> but still. Um, no, it's an incredible building, even just a band. Uh, it's fancy as well, fuck. I think Aaron's imagining UCB East. <laughs> <laughs> God, look at how far back the rows go. <laughs> That's um, New York City improv scene humor for you. If you don't live in New York, uh, fuck off. Uh, so here's a... Uh, I'm sorry, listener. Please don't fuck off. Uh, stay, stay. Stay, right. stay. No, 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 no. Here's, here's some jokes about Cleveland for you. Uh, I got nothing. Um, I'm sorry, Cleveland. We sh- tried. <laughs> uh what did you say in the, the, when you were explaining why you liked opera initially? There was something I wanted to get back to. Uh, was it when I tied to the word visceral? Um, you got on that for a while, that it's a very emotional thing. It's, it's earnest, I think, in a lot of ways. Also, I mean, I can tell you the things I love about new, modern opera that are I'm yeah. working for various people. And what defines modern opera? Also, wait, hold on. We glazed right over this. What defines Sorry. opera? Um, that gets more flexible as time goes on, I think. But in, in the layman's terms. In the broadest terms, it is a, a piece that is a, a theatrically presented piece that incorporates dance, um, music, and is pretty much sung throughout. Okay, when so no, no to, dialogue. Um, yeah, I think often they, it, it's much looser in that regard now, but o- often what defined operetta, especially around the turn of the century and the early 20th century, was that they incorporated scenes of dialogue. Operetta was the, um, the, the, the step between opera and Musicals, musical theater. Yeah. Okay, so... The Gilbert op- and Sullivan kind of... Yeah, gotcha. where there's some yeah. talking and some... Well, most, most of it's sung, usually with orchestra, maybe with just a couple of instruments um, accompanying it. In the earlier operas, you'll have sections um, where people are singing with minimal orchestra underneath them. Usually there's more orchestral support. So is Hamilton an operetta? I would almost... I mean, Hamilton has so little dialogue, I would almost nearly call it an opera. Yeah, okay. I don't think the I don't think the, the the line between opera and musicals is is per, is particularly yeah. Um, and another black great and another white. like classic example is Les Misérables, which has no right. dialogue. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it sung in an operatic style? Not really. Uh, but it is an opera. It's you know, and it was written for like eight synthesizers. There's no orchestra, so yeah. I mean, if you can kind of. <laughs> and it has. It, I mean, I think I think a good measure today is is it is it mic? Is it going to be sung by people who can sing without a mic, or is that it going to be sung? Much, okay. it's much be more sung of a distinctive uh, feature now. Yeah, so Lemez sung with mics. All right. I feel like my brain is growing. Like I'm <laughs> I, gaining see, loads. I, I actually think that this is part of what makes opera so special, is that it has both a space for these intense feelings where you can go and experience sort of the highs and lows of human existence, but it also has so much to think about. I mean, when you think about it, it's extraordinary that... How many languages did you study as you trained, Lisa? Uh, I, I think I've, I've legitimately studied uh, French, German, Italian, and then offhand Russian, Hebrew, and Czech. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. And this is just an expectation. Any given, any given week at the, at the Met, you'd see 
lang- you'd see operas in maybe three of those languages, maybe sometimes more. Um, at Santa Fe, we do five shows a season, and there have been some times when we've had, I don't know that all five have been different languages, but, you know, three, three different languages in a week of performances. Um, you- that's extraordinary exposure. In a time when walls are kind of being built in all these different ways to box in cultures, the fact that you can expect to go to the theater and see these different cultures and these different stories from different places um, interact. Jenny just punched the mic <laughs> with <laughs> anger. It's okay. That's why we have the, the squishy things. Yeah. Um, the Muppet penis is over the mic. She was it's being both emphatic. affect yeah. and intellect. Like you have both components to such a high degree. A, a little secret is that you Homeland Security... You don't have to lean back from the mic. <laughs> Homeland Security paid for my master's because Wait. I wrote about opera being the like the ideal forum for p- cultural exchange. Thanks, Homeland Security. Well, well, yeah, because it's really, so accessible to so many people. I, well, it's not that inaccessible, but the, also... The, well, I, 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 I want to hear Jenny's... There's so many details this. to this. Yeah. Also, almost every culture does have their own form of opera. But I, I would love to hear more about this, too. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Yeah, I, just yeah. wrote the, I, just wrote a, I just wrote an essay where I said that, you know, wh- an opera cast is full of people from all over the world. The only, the only deciding factor is can they sing, can they perform. So you get people from all over the world, whoever is best for the role. So you have these communities working together. People are all speaking different languages. I'll tell you one moment when an opera did not work for me is when I was seeing uh, Puccini's Fanchula del West, which is an, a Western, basically. It's, a Western, it's about yeah. coal mine. It's about, it's about miners group. in California. Basically basically gold rush um so it's a cowboy movie so, or a cowboy opera sung in italian and it was being performed by germans in switzerland in a kind of post-apocalyptic and what? That, was, that was one of the times when i thought you know this just isn't quite working for uh, me There's that sounds like that sounds on. like the most interesting video game <laughs> the history of opera it's available <laughs> online i'll send you a link the, the history of opera is full of some uh, some really interesting because opera is spectacle i mean that is if if there's a synonym for opera opera it's spectacle it's not uh you know it's not easy listening or like uh you know it's it's not just like you go chill and you like kind of watch an opera well there are some of those too there are some sure like little little opera buffas they're funny things there's a lot of slapstick comedy i want to learn what a buffa is that's a fun word (laughs) it's a comic opera (laughs) just um, just these funny it's usually where you have a sassy maid and a big old man kind (laughs) of like a, a, a um who am i trying to think of the shakespearean character Oh, like like Falstaff. Like a Falstaff type character who's generally a very lecherous old man who has a sassy maid and then either, you know, they, they, she ends up with the handsome fellow or she ends up like everybody pulls the wool over the, the little, the the Falstaffy man's eyes. Um, there's lots of comedies out there too. Um, Mm. and sometimes they're done really well. I will say it, I, I think, uh, comedy and opera is hard just because the timing is more extended. Yeah. But, um... Yeah. But there, there's also some amazing moments of comedy. I, so I teach literature, um, and I, one, one of the things that I always like to show to kind of break the walls of sort of opera being uh, both boring and inaccessible um, is the finale of Don Giovanni, <clears throat> which is one of the greatest musical moments in, 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 in history. It's a very complex music. It's been adapted by many, um, many composers thereafter. But in the middle of this incredibly dramatic scene, where the protagonist is getting dragged off into the afterworld um, by a statue that's come to life of a man he killed. Um, in the middle so of far, that, I'm intrigued. In the middle of that, a man he killed little, trying to rape his daughter. I don't. I'm not. I'm, see, I just don't think it's there's an interpretation rape. of that. I know this is a big. This is very popular right now. The rape interpretation. I, yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> a, I don't know how I feel about that <laughs> sentence. Um, it, in the middle of this, you have his. Um, sort of uh, put upon servant who's making funny little comments in the middle of this some of the great Mozart opera some of the greatest music ever written and there are these little funny asides happening right in the middle of it and it, it always surprises students like it's okay to it's okay to laugh at that do you I have an example of that uh, yeah, the, so the statue's asking Don Giovanni, he says, you know, um, you invited me to dinner, and uh, now I'd like to, for you to come to dinner with me in hell. Mm. Um, and, uh, and Don Giovanni's like, fine, I'll come with you. And his, uh, his, his servant is kind of hiding in different places, saying, like, no, no, he can't do it. And then he's like, come, come. And he's like, sorry, he doesn't have time. He's just, like, throwing out these little lines. It doesn't sound so funny, but really, you have this incredible orchestral support, low basses, all these dramatic things happening, and someone just making like little sassy comments from under a table. It's great. In in you know like hmm. hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, way before Sorkin was writing uh, dialogue, <laughs> ah. all of that. Um, 
Uh, but you, I don't believe there was a time before Joss Whedon. So, <laughs> so we've, we've talked a lot about the music and, uh, and the, the, uh, the story, the dialogue. Uh, the other part of opera that makes it, like, uh, excessive <laughs> and great is uh, the production design. And uh, there's, like, this huge Absolutely. history of these, like, advances in production design that were considered, like, impossible. Uh, what, what, um, I forget which one it is, but one of the, the ring cycle. The ring cycle at the Met? Uh, but the, one of the, the four, mm-hmm. uh, I guess they're individual operas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There, there's like a scene underwater, right? With yeah, the, mm-hmm. Ryan Gold starts. Like, the, yeah. the, Ryan the, Gold the beginning starts. one starts underwater. I well, remember yeah. that one had, I saw that. And the amazing thing was you start with these um, uh, German mermaids, Rhine maidens. Germaids. <laughs> Germaids, yes. River mermaids who are on a, um, they're underwater, or are they on, they're on a, a, a beach side. And they're in these giant tails and they're hundreds of feet up in the air um, for this production. They're singing in like these uh, uh, harnesses, and there is a giant projection that every time the tail moves, it somehow interacts and pebbles fall down the beach. Oh, that's interesting. It was gorgeous. I uh, one of the videos that you sent me uh, was there was like no singing in it, but it was two people being raised up uh, and a thing, and there was a big screen behind them of them slowly approaching Earth. And then they went underwater, and there were cells. And then I'm now uh, not actually sure which link that was. People in yellow were were hung up by one leg upside down. I am uh, reasonably sure I must have copied was and pasted the wrong link. Das Rheingold. Oh, oh, oh Rheingold. that's what okay, we're talking so about. That's what we're oh, talking this about. Is the same yeah, thing. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Not, so that's the much. descent into that's the oh, descent. Oh, the descent into the needle. Yeah. Favorite. What yes. the fuck did I just watch? It's amazing. <laughs> this, this, okay, so my dissertation this is on hers. is on Wagner, <laughs> and um, and this is my favorite. This is my favorite scene, maybe in all of opera, because in the middle of it, Wagner writes. So we have all this dramatic music, and what's great is as they're descending in, they're going into sort of the land of the. Um, I don't know Lord of the Rings that well. What's the I don't, what's the what's the equivalent Lord of the Rings thing for the the dwarves Mordor? that live underground? Oh, um, the mountain where they go in the mountain. Um, so they're going into the mountain where they're forging the, where they're forging they're forging the ring. And so okay. this is the descent into the sort of the the center of the earth where they're where the, all this forging is happening, right? So people are hammering on anvils, and then Wagner drops the orchestra out and just scores it for sixteen anvils of various sizes. <laughs> and so at a certain point, all the music stops, and all you hear is the rhythm of the an- anvils, and it's like terrifying but also like weirdly familiar it's not a sound that we hear in everyday life right. but you yeah. can recognize it as a sound from regular life see i'm torn on that being mm. like half of me is like oh that's really cool and interesting and the other half of me is just like okay somebody had a college dissertation and they thought this would be music <laughs> well, like no, well okay Wagner is just a word. Hold Hold example. i know <laughs> i know i'm coming from a no, no, no. place of ignorance i fully admit it you Please. can't hate me for it so uh I, I didn't write a dissertation but um if i had because I, I was <laughs> it goes a, a little something <laughs> um I, I i was a composer that was my my training right um maybe one day i will be again um and that's something that I put so much thought into. And, and you, you do are confronted with every single day is like, why are we doing this? Are we doing this just to be like, what's the next crazy thing I can think of? Hmm. And there are operas that are definitely like that. There's a lot of uh, Stockhausen wrote, you know, to one up the, uh, the, you know, ring cycle. He wrote a seven day cycle where there's a day long opera for seven days or whatever. Yeah. Wait, um, what? And there's like part periods of the opera where there are like gigantic, like, uh, Puppets the size of like uh, several elephants I hate giving to birth you. to <laughs> tiny baby people. I need to clarify and this right now. There's an opera that goes on for literally 24 well, hours. The, the ring cycles. The, the six, ring cycles. 15 20, to 16. Yeah, yeah. It, it's almost a day. And God then, damn. And then it's four different nights. Yeah, and then yeah. Stockhausen. Well, so, uh, and Stockhausen's is like yeah, it's crazy. And um, oh, so it's not 16 uh, straight hours. No, it's four. Oh. It's four. It's okay. four installments. Sorry, now that I it's understand our, that, please keep going. Like no, 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 it definitely is. But it just yeah, it does get done. I think once a year it gets done as a complete like it happens occasionally yeah. god damn all right keep going sorry challenge. about that um yeah i mean i don't i'm not an expert on stockhausen and his operas or whatever and he was a crazy person um <laughs> but uh and so was wagner but i think, <laughs> yeah. I think you end up with that in almost any medium where someone is like i have a concept and they have such a high concept but there's not that much behind it <laughs> well or or you know i'm not gonna make i'm not gonna pass judgment on on that i mean i don't like stockhausen a whole lot but um not passing judgment. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't want to pass judgment on the on that like motivation to do something like because because every once in a while someone does something like that and it is like everybody's like that's a terrible idea or that'll never work and then someone does something amazing yeah. so we can't shit on that uh, impetus to be like I have this idea that I must get out of my head but opera is historically probably the the number one place where this happens maybe around the turn of the 20th century you get some symphonies that are like incredible especially from um uh Mahler and you know that there there's some symphonic works that almost rival the ambition of opera but but they don't really get there opera is the most ambitious art form probably that's ever been attempted your you know half a billion dollar hollywood movies um don't come close a lot of the time. So the, all Somebody that's, needs to rewatch Guardians of the Galaxy. But. All, that, all that stuff with, with, uh, with uh, the you know, people hanging from the ceiling and, and these scenes underwater and all that stuff, that was done not recently. I mean, that was first yeah. done when the operas were first performed in, to some extent. You know? I mean, these things are not... Uh, yeah, Rangold's 1853, I think. Oof. But also, Wagner was very very intent on the own the idea of his own greatness yeah and so was Stockhausen and the nature of the, the, that, that yeah. Wagner was like I'm going to recreate opera as a form and it wasn't he didn't call them operas I think he called it what um he had a like, different different names like, like the musical to- dramas yeah and dra- so did Stockhausen <laughs> <laughs> see when you guys keep dropping those names I feel like I'm at dinner with my 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 <laughs> Father's side of the family, or my mother's side of this the family, as they talk feel about when authors. you guys talk comedy around civilians. Uh, that's this true. is true, I think, of any specialized form. It has yeah. its own group. But I've I, definitely I done that to my girlfriend about comics. I think it's very tempting to think about to think about opera as kind of a cul-de-sac where these ideas kind of funnel in, and maybe things are adapted from novels or adapted from plays or stories, and they kind of go there and maybe circle around a bit and don't come back in. But think about oh. how many great scenes in. I mean, the thing about Wagner is that he was a crazy person. He was an asshole, but. If you, I, I think so I are most of up, our heroes. I never up, know anything about your heroes. It'll break your fucking heart. The truth. There was a moment he wrote a lot, and there was a moment where I, where I was reading too much of Wagner's grandiose ideas about things and not listening to him enough. And I did get to a point where I was like, "Oh, great, more you know, you mm. reinventing the world." But when you listen <laughs> to it, when you listen to it, you realize like, "Oh, he was actually that." Dickhead was onto something, you know. It, are, really are you good. talking about the? Are you talking about the anti-Semitic stuff? Is that everything? <laughs> oh, no, take the, it. Whoa, the, oh, anti-Semi- oh, oh, the anti-Semitic oh, oh, stuff is, is the, uh, terrible. Was, is the worst. Was, 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 well. was there also the the um? Who was the woman that the letters that became the song cycle? Oh, it's uh, Matilda Vazendon. Uh-huh. She's not his cousin, but they, I mean, yeah, it was something. Illicit. Lots of bad stuff was yeah, happening. Fucking everyone. You yeah, know, hating everyone. Um, I mean, I think yeah, that just illustrates the point that. This is just me being my cynical self, but a lot of people get successful. Yeah, there's a certain amount of self awareness that you have to not have to be successful. Hmm. Um, and I think Wagner and uh, who, who's a modern day you know example of that. Um, I always I, I think that he's closest to Kanye and Kim. Yeah, honestly. Kanye's perfect. Kanye Kanye is perfect. Kanye is a perfect example. Yeah. So Kanye is a human opera. Or, um, uh, look, he's doing a lot of similar things that Wagner's doing, right? He's, Wagner's he's thinking about the way in which like <laughs> life is performed around you, right? Staging, staging life, oh, and that so one really long fashion video design, like yeah. album he had with the girl with the wings and the glue oh, on yeah. feathers yeah. to her mm-hmm. boobs. So and, he's definitely going in that direction. I remember that? Uh, yeah, it's a perfect analog for. And I also want I want to talk a little bit about modern opera and just the idea sure. that opera can change and become and, and, and the idea of opera that it is this fixed thing in the past. I think is more that people don't have an idea of what opera is now, and it's um, they see only the top-shelf names like the Met, where they don't get to do a lot of what's modern in opera. Um, they just this past year had an opera written by a woman, a living female composer, that came up, and it was incredibly well-reviewed and beautiful. But, oh, who was that? Hmm? Who was that? Sariaho. Did you say Oh, it? Sariaho. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, but the fact that it, there hadn't been a female composer at the Met in like a hundred years. God damn. So, yeah. There's things, but also <laughs> it's called it, the it's Met, also, not the woman. <laughs> it's also, you know, I mean, television's not that much different. So, yeah. I mean, if you look at the numbers, but modern opera, you end up with a lot of things. I'm working, um, with a composer right now who's, I'm helping write the libretto for an opera that is about the story of two different couples during the, the Arab spring in Iran. And it's based on true stories of couples Ooh. that got caught up in the rising and the revolution and the, um, the fallout from that. 
You have an opera right now by a wonderful um, composer named Laura Kaminsky, and her opera is called As One, and it's a two-person opera. There is um, a baritone and a mezzo, two singers, a man and a woman, and it is the story of a transgender woman. And oh. starts with the, the childhood of this person figuring out who they are and becoming and watching the focus change from the voice that is behind to the woman that emerges. And as she deals with this and amazing scenes dealing with violence towards her for being transgender and trying to exist in the world. And it's toured across several production, uh, several opera companies across the country at this point. What's it called again? As One. As One. It's, oh, it's such a good piece. Yeah, that sounds Lord. really interesting. Um, there's so much incredible, there's a wonderful opera company in New York right now called Rhymes with Opera that has an improvisatory <laughs> opera that they're working on. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm excited to. Um, at Santa Fe this summer, we're doing a commission um, by a young composer who it's uh, it's commissioned about the life of Steve Jobs and he's going to be in the pit with a uh, uh, like doing electronic music during the performances. The composer will be in the pit, I think, for the first time. Okay, all of this sounds really yeah. fucking cool. A friend of mine like, right now is in Utah doing an opera version of I think it was a film as well, The Long Walk of some some some. It was a film as well, but it's about. Um, I think the death of a soldier and a soldier coming home from war and dealing with that. Mm. There are so Wait, many... coming home and dealing with his own death? No, someone else's, I believe. Ah, gotcha. I, I think, um, I can't remember exactly because I think I'm conflating the film and the opera right now. Uh, a friend of mine, Martin Bakaria, an incredible tenor, um, is doing it, I think, in Utah. But there's so much out there. Yeah, there's, there's so great, so great stuff is happening. Moby Dick, the, there's a Moby yep. Dick mm-hmm. opera. Jake it's, it's, Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was, uh, I don't know if it actually premiered at my university, but he was writing it when he was... He, he visited while he was writing it and, and was workshopping. So got workshop there, yeah. Oh, he he was doing a uh, an arrangement for for orchestra that mm. he was working on and, and around when I was in school and graduating. And so I hung out with Jake Heggie, my friend Jordan. <laughs> hung out with him. Uh, he's an awesome dude. That's, That's all awesome. Oh. That shout really out cool. to Jake Heggie. <laughs> shout out to Jake Heggie. But also shout out to all the small opera companies in New York that are up and coming right now, like... You have Heartbeat Opera, you have um, Loft Opera, you have um, Loft Dell'Arte Rock. Opera Theater, um, uh, Utopia, Rhymes with Opera, and so many places that are really working to create these full productions on very limited budgets, people who are struggling with the fact that a lot of grants are about to go away. <laughs> uh, so and they're still going to do this. So I'm assuming that, like... Pardon me. Uh, seeing a an opera like a, a a YouTube video of of any of these is not nearly going to cut it for really like experiencing the full thing. I need to see it live. I think it's it takes a certain either you have to already have a certain preset knowledge and appreciation. I think for that to translate as well to you, or it just has to be something that you kind of you like music in that regard. But mm. it's definitely not going to be representative of the actual experience of going to see an opera also just like any other you know genre i don't even know if opera is a genre as much as it is its own art form Mm -hmm. but um there's gonna be stuff that's for you and stuff that isn't and stuff that's i wanted to create a generator at some point that could like you would choose which television show you liked (laughs) and it would tell you what opera you should see let's do that let's do that right now let's yeah no let's figure out the best opera for me uh modern sounds great no, I definitely would like it to be modern. Okay, I've got two suggestions. Uh, all right, all right. My favorite TV shows are Firefly, uh, Jessica Jones, pretty much most of the Marvel Netflix shows. Okay. Uh, I love uh, uh, Happy Endings, Community, anything Dan Harmon does. Okay. Um, I've been watching a, a lot of The New Girl. I think it's one of the funniest shows on TV. And Steven Universe. Uh, are, oh, I love Steven Universe. It's one of the best shows there is. <laughs> Uh, uh, so those are so those are some of my favorite like, shows. Something like Jessica Jones, yeah, which has a lot of um, a lot of internal turmoil, I think, to it, and a little bit of surrealness in elements as she goes through this. Mm-hmm. There's a wonderful, um, I think it's Czech opera called Kroll Roger. Um, oh, it's so good! It's so good, and it was this fantastic opera from the early 20th century about a king who is presented with a, a, a prophet who is all about like pleasure and life. And kind of going back and forth in a psychological battle with this man that you eventually realize is a battle with him struggling with his own 
I mean, in many interpretations, the, the, the composer was a very closeted homosexual because of mm. the nature of the times. So kind of parsing this, um, dealing with his own, his own trauma and his own uh, uh, repression, working with this character. It's a g- really beautiful piece. But um, Firefly, something like Firefly, something adventure-oriented. Yeah. I, I, think, well, I think Moby Dick. Moby Dick or yeah. Magic Flute. Like a, a, hmm. a good oh, and tasty I, magic flute. I don't love magic flute. I don't I've love. Gotta say. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. What's magic flute? I think a it's lot of us who know don't ma- like magic flute because it's very. <laughs> it's it gets played so much. I no, also just also not more... a big Mozart fan, but fair. Um, but th- that's another. That's a good uh, historical example of like that was popular. I mean, like that was that was for the people. That was an opera that was specifically written. There was like high opera for like the the, the fancy people, and then there's this opera that was written just like let's have fun and and show all the people like the little people what you know. It's an opera. It's a Mozart opera that is. It has princes and princesses and an evil queen and and um you know and it's a, boring. Yeah. <laughs> parts of it are boring but I know a lot of people who really like it Do and you? find it very accessible mm-hmm. I, <laughs> Jenny um, I don't think you. I don't think no I don't think he would like it because he was talking because you were talking about you were talking about things that were boring and it has more of the sort of sung but not really sung that's true I, yeah. Yeah. okay well I mean I like, I like I like something with stakes I think Tosca I, mm. I, okay. I it's it, it's so hard not to like what's not Tosca? to like it so early early 20th century it's it peop, it, it doesn't necessarily sound as modern as um, as like Coral World Guerra does, but it's uh, but it it's it sounds lush. It's got um, it's got intrigue. It's got a surprising murder. It's great. I'm gonna throw one out there. Uh, there's no like direct correlation, but I just think it's a really cool kind of like gritty, um, and it's about someone going crazy. Uh, Peter Grimes. Yes. Oh, Peter Grimes. What's, yeah, Peter okay. Grimes. Is great. I think that one's very. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say necessarily accessible, but for someone with like for me, who likes it's in English. Modern, it's in English. It's that's a yeah. that's a big selling point. It's fairly so that English is tough. Yeah, it's no joke. <laughs> yeah, uh, just saying it's in English. It's and, Britain. And that's mu- not doesn't necessarily yeah. mean. But the music's like super cool too, which I think for me is kind of important. Yeah, <laughs> and it's got orchestral. It's, it's, it's got craziness, and it's got orchestral or- or interludes that actually just let you kind of zone out. While things, ha- I mean, they're beautiful, so they kind of are like this rapturous music. But it's it's no one singing, and you don't have to figure out what's going on with the plot. You just get to kind of enjoy the music, and then the action starts again. It's got all these. Sometimes they're played as a concert piece, just these like yeah, incredible exactly. musical hmm. it's and interludes. Kind of, I think also La Boheme with what he was saying with like New Girl and some of the others. Like it gets that comic line, but also the relationship drama is yeah. a little. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming it's more of an ensemble cast than yeah. Yeah. So you have you have story. two guys living in an apartment that are poor artists with their two friends that come and the girl who lives downstairs who finds a reason to go knock on the other guy's door, you know his roommate has the on again off again girlfriend that they just screaming fight in public mm-hmm. all the time. Um, yeah, it's, and great comic, great comic moments. It's it it, funny. it, it dra- rides the line between sort of sweeping love story and. Really funny. I really um, wish um, the one thing I wish out of out of sub, super titles and subtitles sometimes, especially with operas like La Boheme, is that they would make the dirty jokes more evident <laughs> because there are a good amount of dirty jokes in that one. Can you have sub one? subtitles for the like, subtext? Like when he when he, he's he's writing, you know, a piece for the Beaver and yeah. things like that. <laughs> and like that was that wasn't inadvertent. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so it sounds like there's a lot of charm and and stuff that. It sounds like for me to fully enjoy opera, what I would need to do is, first of all, know the story going in, I think it's which is idea. not something I, I had known, so that changes a lot. Uh, give myself permission to tune out and then tune back in and see it live, uh, preferably mm-hmm. one that's more modern um, and in English. And a, a really good production, so don't go to the like community theater production of Wozzeck, because that would be Oh, hard. oh, oh, that would hurt. But I did, one thing I said This you, is a joke um, that I understand. <laughs> Wozzeck is a... Wozzeck is very psychological and very um, it's atonal. angular. It's atonal. A, it's an atonal opera. Uh, it's amazing, too. It's probably my favorite. Oh, it's, it's a trip, man. Um, one of the things I did send you is actually a clip from uh, Trouble in Tahiti, which is by Leonard Bernstein, um, you know, who also, like... West Side Story and things like that and it's this 1950s couple and it 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 parodies a lot of um the the sounds of the era at that point and the nature of a relationship but there are things it's it's got a lot of funny moments got a lot of tender moments um yeah so things like that well wonderful uh okay 
So if we started with me at a six, I realize now, like, just how I knew I knew nothing, but now I know how much I don't know. Uh, so while I'm not super gung ho about opera, I'm now a lot more open to the idea of going to see one with you guys. Yeah, we're going to make that happen. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Uh, like, I, I think I could go and I could definitely pay attention a lot more before I tuned out. But also, again, knowing that I'm allowed to tune out and then come back in is, yeah. and not feel like I missed you're something is great. You're just not allowed to fall asleep and snore. Uh, if you can fall asleep quietly, okay. you're fine. <laughs> I think I can, we can make this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So if we started at a six, I think now I'm down to maybe like a two or a three. Oh, like, yeah. yeah all like, right. Take it. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I'm a lot more open to... To going to one. I, I have my reservations, but I, I at the same time, I'm just like, okay, you know, I do, I would like to be this cultured kind of person. I would like to be a, <laughs> uh, someone who can go like, when Voltaire did, uh, Jan Yerb, uh, he, man, the way he hit that. I need you to ease up on the idea that you have to be inherently cultured that to enjoy Glorpador. opera. That <laughs> Gazorp, yeah. Gazorp? Yeah, I Gazorp, love Gazorp. my Gazorp, yes. Gazorp, Gazorp operas. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Right. I am, I am one of you. We need to make a Rick and Morty opera. <laughs> oh, yes. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> I can. I have people I can call. We can, can you, do this. Can, right, you, do, can you give us a little bit of a Rick and Morty opera right now? I, I, I don't know. What would I vote? I out. Um, no, we, we need to make this happen. Can we hear um, a Me Seeks opera? <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, the Meeseeks would be way up there. They'd be fucking coloraturas losing their goddamn mind. Um, oh, man. Oh. Well, now, now we have to... If there is a Rick and Morty, Morty opera, it happened here first. It happened here first, and, yep. and you guys will get all the credit. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> now, now for what everybody's sure. waiting for, the scores. Okay. Yes, please. So, Aaron... Uh, you did pretty well, actually, since you started at negative twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, you are at negative seven. Ooh, <laughs> it's better than I thought. Uh, Lisa, you are at four hundred ninety-seven. Hey! Okay, Woo! so like so far it. I'm in second. <laughs> so far, and Jenny, you're at four hundred ninety-three, and it's only because the anti-Semitic stuff. <laughs> yeah. I didn't write it. <laughs> you did. Yeah, but you didn't. You didn't straight out. Con- Disavow it. I work on Trump. Wagner. It's 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 well known that <laughs> like program notes say take the care to say that Wagner wasn't actually a Nazi because he died in he died in 1983. <laughs> he, he didn't get a chance to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a well known. It's it's but hey, that's not condoning. Dr. Seuss still just, got to wait. What? Yeah, yeah. Check out some of his political comments. Wait, no, time. hold on. Dr. Seuss was a Nazi. We don't, he, we don't need to go there right now. <laughs> Oh, oh the places we nice just note. went. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, uh, Jenny, do you have anything you'd like to plug? No, I don't have a plug, but I have something to say. Let's hear Which it. is that you, you also shouldn't feel... I think part of the difficulty in opera is going one time, since it's sort of a special fancy thing, going one time and seeing something that may not speak your language and, and feeling that, okay, opera sucks. That I, was I, terrible. I couldn't even get Aaron to go to, uh, to the... Uh, like. A live performance of classical music for the classical music. <laughs> did you? Well, you didn't say, hey, Aaron, let's go to this thing. Like, you uh, don't I, act I did. like you offered I, it. I did, and I told you it was 70 bucks a ticket. And you oh. Were like, no, thanks. Okay, well, that's not against classical music. That's against paying $70. <laughs> Just to say that even, even someone who is a, a deranged fanatic will have shows that they think are boring, that I have fallen asleep at the opera before. I have it, to. It's, it, you know, the, they're not all winners, but they, they shouldn't have to be winners in order to enjoy the Ones that are. The other thing I will say, um, especially with the Met and some of the larger um, companies in New York City, there are incredible deals for people under the age of 30 and 35. Oh. They want to bring in younger viewers. And um, if you if you look for some of their like their rush tickets and their student tickets and their um, their young young professionals clubs, you can get anywhere from twenty dollars to like thirty five fifty dollar tickets to these operas. To sit okay. in, in the... That sounds... I've sat in the front row. Yeah, like yeah. sitting for, in the for, orchestra. For, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, yeah. It's All great. right, that sounds great. Let's do that. And I know you own a suit. <laughs> I, 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 I own a suit. <laughs> this is correct. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, I, what, uh, what do you have to plug? I do have something to plug. I am, um, I'm singing a wonderful composer's work at the end of the month on April 25th at an event called Song Slam. 
uh, which is a competition for new art song. And we're doing an incredible song of a Pablo Neruda poem. Ooh. Pablo Neruda. There we go. I can say words. Um, called yeah, yeah, Serenade. yeah. You've really been dropping the ball on words today. <laughs> but it's at the Here Theater, H E R E, um, April 25th at 8.30 p.m. And there's up to $2,000 in audience awarded prizes. So if you show mm. up, you can help me win money and I'll then buy you a drink. And where can uh, people get tickets for that? Um, I think uh, there's Facebook events, but it's all uh, sparks and wiry cries slash dot org. It's a terrible website name. Um, <laughs> look up Song Slam um, April 25th at Here Theater. Sparks and wiry cries, uh, and I'll be singing there. Wonderful. And where can people find you online? Um, I'm on Twitter. Um, my handle is at Lisa L I S U R, and I'm on Instagram as Lisa Flanagan Voice. Wonderful. Uh, I would like to plug the show that Grant and I do monthly. You Are Not Alone, an uplifting show about depression at the Magnet Theater. Uh, Depending on when this episode airs, uh, the next one will either be Sunday, April 16th at 7.30 or Sunday, May 21st at 7.30. so, yeah, we got an Easter show. That'll, yeah. that'll be fun. And uh, I'd like to plug uh, Gazorpazorp the Opera mm-hmm. coming to uh, the Met in 2094. <laughs> uh, also, if you leave a, a review for us on iTunes, uh, I will read your name along with something that I like about you. But if you'd like to reach out to us directly, you can email us at don'tmindpodcast at gmail.com or on Twitter and Instagram at don'tmindpodcast. Also, you can hit up me at hey, it's Aaron Gold on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Grant, you want to, you don't have a Twitter or Instagram to plug, do you? I have five, but I don't <laughs> use them. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, guy, Jenny, Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Thanks. culturing me in my face. Uh, <laughs> that felt weird. Yeah, uh, it was appropriate. God, yeah. Damn it, my boyfriend's not going to like it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm done <laughs> with the weird sign-off bit. So thank you guys for coming on and keep on minding. <laughs>